This is the last Sunday before the new year, and we've been going through the book of 1 Corinthians, but uh, this morning I want to just take a pause, put a pause button on 1 Corinthians, and we're going to get into 1 Corinthians again next week. We'll be starting chapter 11. Uh, we have, we'll have a few more weeks to, to dig through the book of 1 Corinthians, but I just wanted to talk about something different this morning, thinking of coming to the end of this new year. And so one of the things that we see in the Bible is that God places a very high value on us going back to our memories, going back to remembering Him, to think about Him. And so He wants us to remember the things that He has done in our lives. That's what He wants us to do, is to remember. And He doesn't just simply call us or invite us into this remembering thing, but he actually, in the Bible, commands us to be a people of remembering. And so as we come to the end of this year, I know maybe you're like me, and you're tempted to just run out of this year. Like, these last two years have been so tough. We want a new year. Hopefully things change. Who knows if they will or not. But we just want something different, right? And we're so tempted to run right out of this year. Like, 2022 can't come fast enough for us. I'm done with this year. We don't want what these last two years have brought. All those things like pain and loss and sickness and death and loss of jobs and relationship breakdowns, like all of these things that the last two years have brought that kind of represent for us, we just don't want those anymore. And I get that. I get that we don't want that. But the goal for the Christian isn't to just merely run away from all of these things that have happened in our lives, especially some of these things that have happened this last year or the last two years. We don't run away from things. Really, the call to faith and what God has for us is a turning and a looking at even some of these painful realities that we've had in our lives, and we're reminding ourselves in the midst of all of that, we are remembering who God is and what God has done for us in the midst of these painful realities. It's not simply to run away from our pain, whether it's the emotional, the physical, or the mental pain that we've experienced in our lives or even just this last year, but it's to look at it, our pain, and to say, despite the pain, God sustained me. God was with me. And for some of us, God healed you this last year. He was faithful. He was good. For those of us, there was moments of rebellion even in this last year, right? Times where we had that just brought us to our knees. Some of us had moments where our eyes were off of God. We were looking at other things, and we thought, like, this is what's going to happen, God. If this is what's going on, I'm done for a while. I'm going to do my own thing. And even in those moments of rebellion, we can look at God, and we can see that he was still gracious, that he was forgiving, and that he surrounded us with love. And for those moments of fear that we had, where, like, fear gripped us. Fear was there, and we just felt overwhelmed by what was happening in our lives. We don't want to think about those things. We don't even want to look back at those things again, because it was so hard. It was so fearful in that moment. But if we look at that again, we see even in those moments of fear that we had, God was comforting us, and he was carrying us through. And you can go down the list of all of those things that maybe we experienced over the last year or two years, financial issues, relational issues with people, uh, even addictions or whatever it is. But in the midst of pain, if you are a follower of Jesus, what I can promise you is, is that if you look close enough, what you will see in all of this and that through all of the pain and through all of the loss and the hurts and the hardships, you will see the loving hands of God right there with you. 
He didn't leave you. And so this is, this is the call of the Christian. It's to remember. That's our call. We actually look to remember. All right? That's what we're called to do as Christians. We look, we look to be reminded of who God is and what God has done in us and for us. That's what we do. In fact, God would regularly command his people to remember. That's what he did. And it wasn't just this act of remembrance that you had to do, but it, he actually set up these rituals and these festivals for them to remember. And so they became like the rhythms of their life, remembering God. God wanted them to stop what they were doing, and he wanted them to remember what God had done for them. Think about it. Talk about it. Rejoice in it. What, what God has done. In fact, he wanted them to retell the story year after year after year after year after year. Retell the story of what God has done. Don't forget. And generations later, we're commanded to retell and to remember the story of God, of his people, what he has done, saving them, rescuing them, protecting them. He said, remember, remember it. And I'm going to give you a list of verses, and we're going to look at these and, and read these here this morning. These aren't all of the verses on remembering in the Bible, but they are enough to show us that this is the heart of God. So the first comes in Exodus 13, verse 3. It says, Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand the Lord brought you out from this place. Remember, Deuteronomy 5.15, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Remember, keep going. Deuteronomy 7, <coughs> excuse me, says if you say in your heart, these nations are greater than I. How can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt, to the great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand, and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So the Lord your God will do to all the peoples whom you are afraid. And so when you look at your situation and that situation in your life just looks bigger than you. Many times it is bigger than you, right? In that moment when you are facing something that's overwhelming in your life, the fact of the matter is, is turn and remember your God. Turn and remember your God. And that's where we find peace. That's where we find hope in the midst of all of that is to turn and remember our God keeps going. We're not finished with these verses yet. Psalm 105 says, remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. Ephesians chapter 2, remember that you were that, that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. In fact, we see this in the very act of communion that we take. We take it usually once a month on the first Sunday of the month, but when we take communion, right? And, and we're going to talk about this in more detail in a couple of weeks because it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, next week, we're going to be in the first half of 1 Corinthians 11. Then that following week, we're going to hit on this communion that, that we see in the scriptures and we take together. But 1 Corinthians tells us that when we do this bread, we take the bread and we, and we, we take the cup, we do this in remembrance of, of Jesus, right? We remember. We remember the gospel story of what Jesus did for us, why he came. We also see in the scriptures that there's this failure when we don't remember, right? 
See, there's a lingering impact and even generational issues that happen when we don't remember all that God has done and what he, you know, what he's, who He is. We see this here in Judges 8. And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God, who had delivered them from the hand of all of their enemies on every side. Now, if you know the book of Judges, if you've read it, you're familiar with it, like this is the chronicle of the failure of the people of God to remember his faithfulness. You see it over and over and over throughout that book. They regularly rebelled in response to not remembering God. That's what happened. Then you see in Psalm 78, verse 11, it says, they forgot his works and the wonders that he had shown them. Our response then to these and and many, many other scriptures in the Bible is back one, Psalm 77. It says in verse 11, I will remember, I will remember. It says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all of your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. I will remember. Say that with me this morning. I will remember. Let's say it again. I will remember. That's the testimony right there of every Christian. I will remember. Now, what's the impact of all of this? Because we have to live in the very reality that when we do remember It's not a passive activity of just reminding ourselves of what has happened in the past, what happened back then. But it's actually an active, formative reality that when we remember who God is, which is his character, right, the character of God, and we remember what he's done, which is the conduct of God, that it's meant to strengthen us, that it's meant to form us and to grow us into the very image of God. That's what it's meant. And so we remember it changes us. It makes us like, more like God and the character of God. And so it's to stand in the place that he has called us to be as the children of God, who we are. And so when we remember, it's actually actively doing things in our lives. It's actively correcting forgetting. And you may not realize that this is an issue that you have, forgetting, that this is an issue that I have in my life. It's an issue that's running in the background. And if we don't actively fight against it, then we will no doubt drift towards it, forgetting. It's the issue here, forgetfulness. And, 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 and benign as that might sound, and as small as that might mean to us, and if you're like some people, Like, you pride yourself in moving ahead, moving on with life, right? Like, when today's about over, you're at the end of the day, you're not thinking about that day, you're thinking about tomorrow. What am I going to do tomorrow? You don't want to be, have this lingering thoughts of what happened this day or the day before. But God says, that's not the pattern to form your heart and your life the way that God wants for you. When you don't take time to think, when you don't take time to remember, to look back on what God has done and who he's been, you're giving yourself over to a very dangerous issue, and that is forgetfulness. Forgetfulness. See, the moment when Israel had been rescued by God, and he's preparing them and sending them into this land that he had promised them, He gives them a warning there. In fact, you see this warning throughout Scripture, but we're going to look at it specifically in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And it says, And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God. He's like, when you get over there into this land that I'm giving you, that I've promised to your forefathers, and you've got food, and you've got money, and you've got all these nice homes, don't forget me, God said. Don't forget me when your bills are paid. Don't forget what it was like when your bills weren't paid. 
when I've provided for you. Don't forget what it was like when you didn't have anything and I still carried you through. Remember what I, your God, has done for you. What I've done. See, when you don't remember, you forget. And you know what forgetting brings? It fuels rebellion, and I would even say it fuels sin. And we see this regularly in the scriptures with the children of God, right? It was their forgetting. Their forgetfulness didn't draw them near to God to have a passionate, fervent allegiance to the one true God. It actually was the opposite of that. It led them to rebellion. It led them to idolatry, to not follow the commands of God and how he's asked them to live and commanded them to be. And so forgetfulness has this really weird and powerful dynamic to it that when we don't think about who God is, And what God has done for us, we tend to actually be drawn away from him. We don't just stay kind of right here in this relationship. We kind of drift away when we don't think about him. It leads to forgetfulness. And we tend tend to make things, other things, not God, but other things, or even ourselves as our own idol. We begin to worship those things. And so forgetting is dangerous because it fuels sin. Maybe today you recognize that you're in this regular pattern of sin. Or maybe you just notice that your heart is hard right now. And you've drifted away from God. Like you were once walking so well and so close with God, but now your heart is cold toward Him. You don't know what to do. You've gone all this way and... and, and, I don't know what all went into that, if that's you. But could it be that there's a measure of forgetfulness there in your life? You have forgotten about what, who God is and what God has done. Could it be that you're not thinking about the goodness of God? Could it be that your eyes are, were on you and your pain and your loss instead of what God has done and what God has been for you in your life? See, those moments... When my heart starts to grow cold or begins to grow cold, do you know what's happening? What I'm not doing is I'm not thinking about God's faithfulness. When I'm not, what I'm not doing is I'm not thinking about God's love and God's grace toward me. I'm not thinking about all that he has done in my life to bring me to where I am today. And what happens, though, when I do remember When I think about what God is and what he's done, what happens when I remember that I used to be a slave to sin and that he came and he freed me from my sin? What happens when I remember that at one point we were making $1,000 a month and yet we still were able to make it? It was hard, but God was faithful. What happens when I think that, you know, he didn't provide things, but he sustained us in those moments? What happened when I remembered? Well, my heart starts beating. And my hands start raising, and all I can say is, thank you, God. Thank you, God. See, remembering, it brings about worship and gratitude. Forgetting doesn't. Forgetting, like we've said, it fuels rebellion and sin in our own heart. But it also harms the next generation. I don't know if you've seen this in the past, in the scriptures too, but this is true. Psalm 145, 4. Do I have that one here? There we go. Psalm 145, 4. And it calls, One generation shall command your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. See, this is to be the regular pattern right here. It's the act of remembering these memorials weren't simply for the present generation, but it was for all the generations to come. For when the parents remembered, the children's faith would grow. And the parents remembering and modeling, the child would remember who their parents' God is, and they would follow in those ways. One of the scariest verses in the Bible is Judges chapter 2, verse 10. And it says, And all that generation also were gathered to their fathers, 
And there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord or the work that he had done for Israel. The kids didn't know their parents' God. The kids didn't think about who their parents' God were, didn't know the works of their God. Let that sink in, right? They didn't know. And if you're a part of the church, there's a generation that belongs to you, to us, right? They're the children after us. And what are we leaving behind? What are we leaving? Are you leaving this active rhythm of remembering and putting the character and the conduct of God around and before those around you? Are you showing, are you talking about, God did this, God has been faithful. When you move on, what is left there for the people behind? The best thing we can leave is that remembrance, the faithfulness of God, faithfulness of remembering. Is that what we've modeled for them? See, when you remember, you correct forgetting, but we also correct discouragement. Now, the last two years, they've been, they've been tough, right? You know, they've been hard. They've been very discouraging. And we've had some things that have happened in each of our lives that have affected us. And a lot of it's brought pain into our lives, right? Whether it's because of COVID or not. I mean, we've had things happen in our lives. Whether it's because of politics or it's just simply life happening, We've had some pain. All of our lives have been affected, and we felt some deep discouragement because of these things. And here's what happens. If your eyes are just simply on all these things that have happened in you over the last year or two years, and that's all the words that we speak, and that's all our minds think about, then you are going to drift deep into the hold of discouragement in your life and cynicism. And though a Christian may visit that place of discouragement, we were never meant to build a home there. Some of us have built whole neighborhoods in discouragement. And some of us have been living in discouragement for so long that we don't even really want to leave there. We find a comfort in discouragement. And as Christians, we remember, we remember God so that we can fight the discouragement in our lives. We fight against it. Because discouragement isn't meant to be the tone of the Christian. It's not. We all have moments there, But the tone of the believer is one of joy and gratitude. And it's not just because of the circumstances in our lives. It's a deep resolve in the character of God. That he is good, that he is faithful, that he has brought me through before and he will be there today. And that's enough to fight the cynicism and the discouragement in our lives. Remembering him. See, what happens is is when we remember, it puts steel in our bones. It allows us to stand firm. It gives us the courage to go on in our lives, to remember God. It doesn't mean that you don't cry, you don't hurt, right? It doesn't mean that you can't have any discouragement in your life. It means that I will pray and I will pursue remembering God. I will pursue that to fight against the discouragement so that discouragement isn't my life. Now the Christian laments, right? There's some sadness in our lives. But the Bible shows us that we, rem- we, we, we lament while we rejoice, right? It's not lamenting without rejoice instead of rejoicing. In the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk was a prophet of God. And he's standing in the gap of who he knows God to be and the fulfillment of who he knows God desires to bring for them, right? Like this is, he's like, this is who I know God is, and I'm here, and I, this is what I know God wants to do, but I don't see the reality of this right now in my own life. It's not happening. My reality is not fitting in with that. And so he's praying And he's wrestling with this reality. And this is what he says in Habakkuk chapter 3. He says, 
Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. See, we believe that God can and will do it again. We believe that we will experience His faithfulness again. And we don't always know the package that it will arrive in, that what faithfulness will look like to us. It's different for every one of His believers you, a lot of times. I don't know what it's going to look like for you. What I do know is, is that He will carry you. What I do know is, is that He will protect you. He will sustain you. And what I do know that is, is that even if life on this side of heaven ends, He has not failed you. As a Christian, you are ushered into the presence of God And so you always have room to remember and to rejoice and to fight off discouragement in your life. And there have been times where I've wanted to build a house right there in the middle of discouragement and stay. Like, I say things like, God, just just leave me alone. I don't want to be happy today. I just want to be here. Today I'm discouraged. Today I need to be angry for a little bit. But God, in His graciousness, even in those moments, you can sense His grace and His patience. When I'm not sure that there's joy, and my heart is, is just gripped with pain and frustration and discouragement, God will just lean in. He'll say, remember this, Joel. Remember this. Remember this. Remember this, and you might not see any light at the end of your situation, maybe even for months or even years, but remember what you have seen. I am standing here because God has been faithful. He faithfully drew me back to remember, to remember what he has done. And so what we've been saying, but here it is, is the point, remembering causes rejoicing. We are all called to be a rejoicing people. What does Philippians 4 say? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. You know what's a really tough word in all of that? Always. I wish that word wasn't there sometimes. Always, right? Right, it's there. And what I would encourage you is, is in that moment, even right now, Instead of thinking about all of the reasons you can't rejoice, remember all the reasons that God has given you to rejoice. He has sustained you. He has carried you. He has walked with you. And if you know him, if you know him, you know the things that, you know, one of the things that you should always look back to and go back to in your mind is is the fact that You know Jesus is is not an accident. You don't know him. It's not by accident. Like you were enslaved at one point in your life. I don't care what age that you came to know Jesus as your Savior, you were enslaved. If you were like me and you came to know Jesus at the age of five, well, from the ages of zero to four, you were enslaved like I was, right? And if you came to know Jesus later on in your life, you were enslaved up to that point. But if you know Jesus... It's the testimony of God rescuing the sinner. And if that's true, and it is, oh, it's so good, right? He rescues sinners, so we can rejoice. We know God. We've been set free from the enslavement of sin. And again, this is why communion is so precious. It's the very act of remembering and rejoicing in what God has done for us. And no matter what we bring into our communion time and the table, we always leave with the retelling and the remembrance of the story of God. So this is what I want to do. I want everybody to either grab your phone and you open up your notes, or if you don't have anything like that, we've got some paper and pens, and Ben will hand them out to you. So if you need paper and pen, I want you to raise your hand. 
And I want us to just take a few minutes, and we're going to do this in silence. There's not going to be music. There's not going to be anything. We're just going to sit here together, and I, don't, and, and I want us to remember over this last year how, who God is and what God has done. Who God is and what God has done in your own life. Okay? And I don't want us to rush through this moment here this morning. Okay, and I don't want to say, oh, I'll get to it this afternoon, or I'll do it tomorrow. No, we're going to do it right now, okay? Even the things that you want to run away from, you don't want to look at, I want us to remember those things. I want us to see God in the midst of those things. And so we're going to make a list of things that you remember who God has shown himself to be in your life and what he's done for you, all right? That list So just take a moment to do that. Who God is and what God has done for you this last year. And if you're watching at home, I want you to do the same thing. Grab paper. Remember who God is and what God has done for you. If you need some help, just remember those moments he was faithful or he was powerful. Uh, he was patient in your life. Remember those moments when he provided for you? And maybe some of you don't know how he's provided for you, but guess what? Your lights are still on and you have food and you're still here. That's one way. You can also remember the nights when your tears just wouldn't stop and you honestly just wanted to give up, but then the sun came up the next morning and you didn't lose your mind. You're not lost. He held on to you. Remember how he healed you? Maybe even when he didn't heal you, but he sustained you. Remember the many times he protected you, like you saw how bad it could have been in your life, but yet God just provided and he protected you in that moment. Remember when you thought you could never laugh again and yet here you're laughing with joy and, and not everything is perfect in your life and maybe the circumstances haven't changed either, but yet somehow the goodness of God is being felt by you. What has God done? How has he shown himself to you this last year? I'll give you just another minute. And I would say, you, you can keep going with that. We're, we're all about to wrap up here this morning and pray. But I would say, take some time to talk about this list with your family, with some friends. Say, look what God has done. 2021, yeah, it may have been hard. It may have been tough. It may have been just some things just happened that were horrible. But look what God, how he showed himself to me in this. Look what God did, how he provided, right? So take some time to talk with others about this list. And we remember God because God remembers us. Our remembering of God is sustained by the legacy of God remembering his people. And he remembered his covenant love with his people. 
He heard the cries of his people. He remembered the covenantal love. And it wasn't a remembrance because he had forgotten his people. For God to remember is a recalling of all he has promised to be and how he's going to act on the behalf of his people. And so we rejoice in remembering because we are in the center of God's heart and God's mind. Do you realize that God is committed to you and that he's remembering you right now? I mean, think about the very gospel. Jesus Christ, the perfect son of God, he came and lived this perfect life that we couldn't live. And he died a death that we deserve to die. And in the moment of that death, when all hope seemed gone, he came out of the grave. He was alive. And it was all so God would get the glory of bestowing his love and his affections toward us, on us. Promising to never ever forget us, to leave us. And so we remember because God remembers us and he will never forget us. And so as we go into this new year, there may be some things that we just want to get away from from this last year, but I want us to challenge, I just want to challenge us here to carry this year that we're in now into the next year. We carry the testimonies that we have. We carry the sustaining grace that we've experienced. We carry all that we stand, and here we look at 2022, and we believe because God has brought us through 2021, He will bring us through again. There's nothing that He can't get me through. He will sustain. He will be near. He will be faithful, and He will save. Would you bow your heads as we close in prayer? Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of this year, we just have a few more days left, Lord God. Lord, many of us have gone through some hard things, some hurts and some pains, some, some things that we, we, we don't even want to have in the new year, Lord God. We want to get away from, but as we stand here looking at this next year, with all the uncertainties that we've had over the last couple years, God, we remember that you've brought us through. God, we remember your goodness. We remember who you are and what you've done, that we are near you, that you love us, that you remember us. And God, I pray that we would go into 2022 with strength, steel in our bones because we've remembered how you've been faithful in our lives, Lord God how you've brought us through, how you love us. And that's true because we know of Jesus. So God, I pray that you would strengthen us, that God, you'd help us to be a people of remembering, that we would not forget your goodness, how you've been faithful. And God, I pray for those that have been just hurt, who are hurting right now, Lord God, and the pain and the sting of the things that have happened over this last year that are happening right now in their lives. God, I pray that as they remember, it would give them peace. Lord God, give them peace right now. Give them hope right now, Lord God. Let your joy be there. And God, let us be a people who rejoice always. pray, God, for miracles in 2022. I pray for healings in 2022. God, I pray for uh, just the power of the Holy Spirit of God to be evident in our lives. And God, everywhere we go, we would bring you glory. And so we rest assured in you, Lord God, trusting you, hoping in you who, do not, who never fails. We love you and we thank you, God. And this is our hope. This is our joy. And we trust you, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And so as we enter into 2022, let that be your heart remembering. Let that be, even if there's nothing else to hold on to, remember God is there. He is with you. He loves you. 
And so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Go forth in him. There's nothing better. I mean, nothing even comes close. And so you're dismissed this morning. We love you. We're praying for you. God bless.